In this step-by-step -step tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create amazing 3D scenes using 2D images off google.com. It's really crazy that you can take simple 2D images and transform it into something amazing like this. And I'm gonna show you every step of the way. Before we get into the video, I do wanna let you know about my new After Effects plugin, Shake Sauce 2. It just came out. It's by far the best shake in all of After Effects. I'll have it linked down below as well as a seven day free trial. That way you can try it out 100% risk-free. If you don't love it, you can cancel it anytime. But that's enough talking, let's get into the video. So starting off, I like to be in Photoshop and you can see I have a few images here pulled up like PNG clouds and I'll show you how to get those in just a second. A little computer icon from like the old windows. You can see here some text, the building, and then the background. So you can see I use some generative fill to make this and I'll show you how to do that in just a second. So getting started for my example, I just typed in Windows background because I thought this like iconic hill was really cool. And one tip to use while on Google is go to tools and then go to size and make sure it's large that way you get high quality images. And then you can see this is the one I selected. So all I did was just right click copy and then we go to Photoshop and then just paste that in here. And you can see how we have this image. So as you can see, I split the background into two separate images here, the clouds and then the hill, just so there's that a little bit more of that 3D depth. And I wanna go ahead and show you how to do something like that really quickly. So using the lasso tool, and what I'm gonna do while selected on this overall layer is just click Control J, that's gonna duplicate it. And then on this top layer, I'm gonna take the lasso tool and just mask out around where we want it to kind of be deleted. So for example, I wanna expand this sky. So what I'm gonna do is click Delete, we can turn off all the other layers just so it makes sense for you. It's easy to see. And now you can see we have just the sky. And while it's selected with this transparent area, I'm just going to click generate fill and then click generate. And then it should just fill the background with the sky and it will make it kind of like just like a, a clean plate for us to have that 3D. So that's good enough. You can go through and select all these different options. It really doesn't matter too much. This one works for us. So what I'm going to do is control click on both of these and then go to merge layers. That way it's one image and let's go ahead and turn that off for now and now I want to separate this hill that way there's when we have the 3D there's a little bit of separation between the background so if you want you can use the pen tool I'm going to use the quick selection tool because our background's rather easy to select and I'm just going to use the quick selection tool because our background's rather simple to separate and I'm just going to go ahead and get just the hill here and then click control J and then we can go ahead and delete that overall background layer that way we have this hill let's drag that clean plate below it. And now we have, if you drag this down, you can see how, if you bring it down, you can still see how it's like, it would still make sense for something in the background. And that's kind of what you want. So I've already went ahead and done that. So I have the background and then our hill. I added a building. So you can go through and add whatever elements you want. All I do to find these images on Google is just type in like building PNG. And then going to the tool thing I showed earlier, make sure it's large. And then also to find transparent stuff, make sure to go to color and then transparent. And then now you can see any of these images you click, you can just right click, copy, go to Photoshop and paste it in there. And you can see how we now have a building in our image. And then I went ahead and added some text just to kind of give a little bit more separation. So 3D text, I'll go ahead and show all the blending options real quick. You can see stroke, inner glow, inner shadow, gradient overlay, and then drop shadow. If you wanna copy those settings, just go ahead and pause and, and copy that if you wanna add text just like mine. And then lastly, I added some PNG clouds. So you can see here, and then also this computer icon. I went ahead and just applied a simple drop shadow to a lot of these things. That way there's just a little bit separation. You can see if I toggle it on and off on the computer, just what it's doing. So now we have our basic image kind of laid out. What I wanna go through is just make it simple for us. Name our layers cloud and cloud one, our 3D text. Just make sure to name everything so it's super easy to read because when we bring it into After Effects, that's what we're gonna need. So I named the computer computer, you can name this hill, building, and then sky. So now we have a very clear like understanding of what each layer is. And then what we're gonna do is go ahead up to here to file, save as copy, and then Photoshop file, and we can name this 3D tutorial. And in After Effects, you can see this is the scene that I created just playing around real quickly. And I'm gonna show you how to do something very, very similar. You can see how we took a simple 2D image and transformed it into this 3D kind of brought to life kind of deal. So then what you're gonna do is just open up that Photoshop file inside of After Effects and import it. It's gonna have this thing that pops up. Make sure to do layer options, editable layer styles, and then composition retain layer styles. This one's really important and click okay. Then you're gonna see this composition that you can just double click on. And now you can see all of your layers are here. The cloud, cloud one, text, computer, hill, 
building sky and just make sure they're in order of like the proper way. If you designed it in Photoshop in the right way, like back to front, kind of like what you want to be furthest away from the camera to closest away, closest to the camera, you will see that like, you know, obviously the sky isn't over everything else. So just make sure that's the case with yours. And then I'll have this insanely helpful script. If you like doing these 3D things, this one's a no brainer. I'll have a link down below. I got you guys a $5 off discount code. If you use code Brian, go ahead and click the link and download it. You go to file scripts and then open up three to five pro and you can see all we have to do to make this into an insanely useful 3d scene is click create 3d camera and layers and you can see it does mess up stuff initially but really quickly we can make an amazing amazing 3d scene so i'm just going to go ahead and make our composition like five seconds long and then go ahead and click expand background and you can see it has the background all expanded and we just need to go ahead and scale out a few things now. So what I'm gonna do is go to the hill layer and then go to transform and just scale this up. So it kind of takes up down here. It's kind of just down here. And then you can play around with the Z position. So you can zoom in and out like this. And then also the room size is basically how far away the objects are gonna be from each other. So just playing around with that just going to zoom in a little bit and it just takes a quick second of setting stuff up the 3d scene let's go ahead and move that building kind of where we want it over here to the left maybe even scale that up a little bit and hide it here and then we can go ahead and quickly click this camera shake and now we can see we have a little bit more movement now i want to keyframe the clouds and a few other things to make it come together but you can see how we're already having this like really really cool 3d scene i think the intensity is a little bit much uh, let's go ahead and bring that down and then also on the camera 3d layer we can go ahead and go to transform position and then let's go like to the end and we can just go ahead and bring in that z so it zooms into our scene like this and and then we can also just easy ease those keyframes by highlighting them and clicking F9. And now you can see we have this movement like this. I still think the intensity on the shake is still a little bit much. So we're gonna turn that down. But now you can see how everything's starting to come together. I think the clouds look really cool, but what we need to do is actually just animate them. So clicking on one of the cloud layers, we can go ahead and bring it from like left to right. So let's go ahead and key from the position. And then throughout the scene, we can kind of just have this cloud fly by and maybe go down a little bit. And then the other cloud we can just have going the other way, maybe not as much. It just takes a little bit of playing around with stuff and seeing how what elements you add, how they can interact with your scene. Obviously, not every single time you do this, it's gonna have like clouds and stuff. So just think about how your, your elements would interact with the scene. Like for example, obviously we wouldn't move the building because that wouldn't really make sense, but something like a cloud could really kind of help sell the effect. And I think this one cloud just like moves way, way, way too fast for what we're going for. So maybe have it end like here. And it just takes a little bit of that tweaking to kind of understand what looks good and what doesn't. And even this other one, just making it maybe a little bit more subtle of a move. And then depending and then depending on what kind of elements you have, you can add effects to these different layers. So for example, like the clouds would be really good with like some turbulence displace on them. That way they just kind of move around a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is just keyframe the size and the amount and then kind of go through the end and just maybe play around with the size and also the amount a little bit. That way the clouds just have a little bit of movement to them. You can see what that will do to this one cloud, but kind of make it a little bit less of like just an image and kind of moves around you can also add effects like camera lens blur on things like in the background like the building and you can have it you know be a little bit more out of focus at the beginning and then like as we get closer bring it into focus or reverse that around where it starts off out of focus and as we get closer or reverse that it starts off in focus and as we get closer kind of just goes a little bit out of focus as we start looking at this text you can see how it gets blurry back here And then to sell all the motion together, I'm gonna create an adjustment layer above everything and add an effect like RS and Beyond. I think that's just gonna kind of blur a lot of the motion together, make it feel a little bit more interactive. And then as you can see with the RS and B, the camera shake and the motion, you can see how our effect kind of comes together and now has like a 3D kind of scene. This is really good for like visualizers or animations in a YouTube video. And obviously you can do all of this without that script that I showed, but I just wanted to make a video on it because 
it saves so much time creating all the Z separation, the shake, all that stuff that I thought it'd be really helpful to let you know about that really, really helpful tool. Like I said, I'll have a link down below. It's called 3 to 5 Pro. And if you use code Brian at checkout, you'll get $5 off your order. That way you can go ahead and create amazing 3D scenes just like this. I'm gonna be using this literally all the time whenever I wanna create 3D scenes out of 2D images because creating the camera and then stacking all the layers like at different Z positions just takes a really long time. And honestly, that's why I almost never do this, but it's kind of eliminated a lot of like the boring process. Like I love being in Photoshop and separating all the layers and kind of designing what it's gonna look like. But then when it comes to actually like turning it into 3D, it's like, at least in my opinion, not really fun. And it kind of just makes the creating process just a little bit more fun but that's pretty much all i got for you guys in this one if you made it all the way to the end i really do appreciate you if you're not already subscribed be sure to do that that's all i got for you guys in this one peace